Aloha. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Master Paul. I'm honored to be with you here today. It is a Thursday and today is, I believe, March 2nd. It is the day before a very special retreat with my spiritual teacher, spiritual father, whose name is Master Shah. And that is uh, who I dedicate these live streams to. Uh, all of the wisdom, all of the teachings is from the wisdom that this master brings to humanity to bring the conditions of love and peace and harmony. And today's subject is on the Ten Da, which is the Ten Greatest Virtue. Da stands for greatest. It is a Mandarin Chinese word. And so for all those that just stumbled across this live stream, you could receive tremendous value by learning a bit more about the Ten Da, these great virtues, and how to bring them into our lives in the highest best most appropriate way possible so I'm very honored for this opportunity to connect with you so I encourage you to enjoy I've been doing these live streams for about nine months now and they range from opening the heart finding your soulmate uh, they range to uh, health and wellness concerns and blockages on the physical level on the emotional level including depression anxiety anger conditions like that as well as on the mindset level attitudes and beliefs and whatnot and I I approach these real-world blockages using the wisdom and teachings that Dr. and Master Shah has brought to humanity and he speaks of the power of soul that soul carries power soul has great wisdom soul lives forever and uh, accordingly we can receive tremendous value and benefit from the soul. Soul healing, as what is termed, is about bringing balance at the level of origination at our soul level and then blockages that occur at the physical level, relationship, finances, and everything else, they then have the opportunity as well to transform. And so this is the purpose and the intention of being with you today and sharing with you the significance of these teachings. So as indicated today, we'll be on focusing on the Ten Da. Now I will go more into these teachings, but again, for those that are just tuning in, this is uh, the greatest of virtues. They include Da Ai, which is Da, which is the greatest love. Da Quan Shu, the greatest forgiveness. Da Tzu Bei, which is the greatest compassion. Da Guang Ming, the greatest light. Da uh, Chen Bei, the greatest humility. Da He She, the greatest harmony. Da Chang Sheng, the greatest flourishing. Da Gan An, the greatest gratitude. Da Fu Wu, the greatest service. And Da Yuan Man, the greatest enlightenment. And so the, uh, the words that you might understand, might understand are Mandarin Chinese words and then the English translation. So this is the focus of what we'll be talking about today. Um, Master Shah is a world-renowned teacher and healer. He shares the wisdom uh, from the sacred ages and he brings it to us in such a way where we can actually apply it in our life on a day-to-day -day basis to bring resolve and to end suffering as much as possible. And uh, I have spoken many times about how he has brought tremendous value into my life. And so today I'll be sharing with you uh, information regarding these 10 Da's and how we can apply them to our life. Master Shah is offering a very special retreat on the 10 Da's from uh, the 3rd to the 10th. And so that actually starts tomorrow. And so if this is something that you've always been interested in learning more about, if you've ever had an interest in having a desire to to be able to change people's lives in a very positive way. Um, he will be teaching in the form of what's called calligraphy. Now these are what's called calligraphy cards and there are 10 different ones for the 10 Da's. Each one represents one of the Da's. And it's a very special form of calligraphy called Ibitsu, which stands for oneness calligraphy. Ibitsu, I is one. So oneness calligraphy carries divine frequency power and the ability to transform blockages that show up in our life and so when you have one of these uh, calligraphies they can make a substantial difference in your life so today I'll be using them as well to explain and to uh, to share so I encourage you to stay and enjoy so 
let me acknowledge all those that are joining us here today. <coughs> so welcome CJ, welcome Ben, Aloha Kristen, Aloha Karen, good to see you as well Sherry, and Tammy Hunter, Aloha Monica, Aloha Kayla. Lily Dung's joined us, welcome Lily, welcome Zilki, welcome Nurma, Aloha Don, and also welcome Richard. Richard Mall and Richard um, Amadio. Welcome to both of you. Welcome Kristen Rojas and Susan. Welcome Samantha and welcome Angie. Welcome Linda. Welcome Sarah MacArthur. Welcome Lily Dung. Welcome Jana Mahoney. Okay. I think I've covered everybody. And so if I haven't mentioned your name, please forgive me. We will continue to move forward. And so I'm trying a different lighting in, in, to change things up. One of the things that I hear from people occasionally is one of the things I like about your live streams is you don't always have the same boring background. Uh, they like that I have a different background occasionally or sometimes I'm outside or some just something to break up the monotony, I guess. So I do my best to give you some diversity uh, so that you, you can recognize you're watching a different live stream. And so let us connect heart to heart, soul to soul by placing our hands in the soul light, soul service position, which is the left hand in front of the heart center and the right hand gently pointed upwards towards heaven. Let's close our eyes. However long your day has been, let it go. If you're just beginning your day, prepare to have a beautiful day. Let us begin. Dear all layers of the divine, the Tao, the source. Dear all beings of light, serving the plan of the light side, including ascended masters, including all angels, healing angels, archangels, lamas, sifus, gurus, and saints. Beloved Jesus, beloved Mother Mary, beloved Buddha, beloved Kuan Yin, all beings of light, including stars, planets, galaxies, and universes, we love you, honor you, respect you, and ask you in whatever way is appropriate for your presence at this time. We ask that you bless us to open our hearts and souls, to bless us to align our Shen Qi and Jing to heaven and Mother Earth's Shen Qi and Jing, that we can raise and elevate our frequencies. We ask that the wisdom of the Ten Da, the greatest virtues, come and at this time uh, allow me to serve you through their wisdom. Allow their wisdom to awaken you to the highest and best ways that you can bring yourself to this life experience. Very grateful, very honored. Dear the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace and Harmony, transmitted to all souls in all universes. Love you, honor you, appreciate you, and invite you to please be with us at this time. We invite all souls in all universes to turn on the Source Soul Song and to join with us to offer your greatest love, to offer your greatest peace and your greatest harmony. So if anybody new is watching this, please uh, keep your eyes closed, receive the blessings. Everybody else, please join in. <coughs> Lula, Lula, li. Lula, Lula, la, li. Lula, Lula, li. Lula, li, lula, lula, li, lula. Oh, I wash in hurling. Oh, I run, run, lay. Wong li, hing, rong, her, her, musher, shong. Shuang Ai Ping On A Shi Shuang Ai Ping On A Shi I love my heart and soul I love all humanity Join hearts and souls Together, love, peace, and harmony. 
love, peace, and harmony. How? 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So da I and welcome to all those that have come in on the latter end. Welcome Janet. Welcome Sarah. Welcome <coughs> Yvonne and Johnny. And if you have not already hit the share button, please do so. Thank you so much for your sharing. I wish to tell you that because of uh, your collective sharing, I get on average about three new friend requests a day. And that's people that I post this video to. Because if they ask to be a friend request, not every time they're able to watch that video. And so I post it on their timeline and say, thank you for being my friend. From there, they start to awaken. People start to realize, wow, there's some solutions to my soul journey here. So it's really amazing, actually, some of the things that the way your service helps to awaken others, the way your service helps to save other people's soul journey and potentially their lives. Um, I have been able to, to connect with people and assist them with backing away from some of the major associated with depression by offering the wisdom and teachings and then they move forward with it in such a way where they receive the results they were hoping to receive through their own self practices which they would not have if it wasn't for you and your sharing so thank you thank you thank you countless bow downs I'd like to start by offering everybody present a blessing so this blessing will be for anything that you request, including a blessing to for yourself individually, for a body part, an organ, a system. It could be for a, um, a relationship. It could be for blessing your finances. This will be a blessing that I'll be using uh, a very, very powerful calligraphy card that I have. And I will also use a healing transmission that I have that I received about uh, six years ago, very high level healing transmission uh, that em employs my voice. <clears throat> and so um, at this time, I will give you uh, a little time to make your request to heaven. I don't need to see your request, just make it to heaven. And we always have better results when we do a quick forgiveness practice. So, dear my beloved Creator, please forgive me whatever I may have done in this or any time that has brought about conditions that I need to ask for blessings for whatever you're asking for. Because if you're asking for blessings for a specific thing, that means there's some form of suffering somewhere for you most likely occurring. So ask for a blessing in that area, then ask for forgiveness for any suffering you might have brought to others in this same area. And we say, thank you, thank you, thank you, divine. So I will turn on my treasure. This will be a three minute blessing. Might not seem like much, but I have definitely seen significant changes and I'm using two separate transmissions to serve you. Blessing for each person's request as appropriate begin. <laughs> Hey, uh, hey, uh, 
Thank you, thank you. Healing transmissions, return. Okay, I'm hot. I don't know about your experience, but that definitely got me, got my energy flowing. So, and that was my uh, gratitude to all of you for your presence, for your sharing. I truly appreciate it. <clears throat> and so welcome Esther, you received that blessing as well. Welcome, Pamela. So today is being is focusing on the nature of the ten das and the significance of the ten das, how we can apply them into our life, and what we can do to bring about resolve with some of the blockages that show up using the ten da. Now, uh, about two weeks ago. I employed some of the ten das for a, a four-day cycle twice. <clears throat> I employed da I, the greatest love, and then the following week I employed da uh, da quan chu, the greatest forgiveness, and then the following week I employed da chen bei, the greatest humility. And in each of those four days for that week, I did da I for self-love. The second day. Da I for uh, relationship. The third day was Da I for our finances. The fourth day was Da I for our health and wellness. Then I did the same thing for Da Quan Chu, the greatest forgiveness. Then I did the same thing for the greatest humility. In each of those areas, personal uh, love towards self, relationships with others, finances, and in health. And Many of you may not have noticed that the teachings did not cross over each other. There was new wisdom and teachings each time because they were associated with each of the virtues, each of the Da's. And so the beautiful thing about the Ten Da is even though uh, I use them in this example to apply to the same things, uh, love of self, love of others in relationship, bringing balance to the relationship, bringing balance into um, our imbalances with finances and so forth with the uh, um, uh, health and well-being. 
we still were able to get tremendous forward momentum and resolve in applying those different da principles or virtues to these different areas that are pertinent in our lives. I'm sure most of you would agree that um, um, you know, health and wellness of our physical, emotional, mental, health and wellness of our finances, health and wellness of our relationships and of our love towards self are all very pertinent in our lives. And this is where the 10 da come in. So I'm gonna uh, uh, speak about them briefly and then go into a little more detail on each. This is the calligraphy associated with <clears throat> da I. Da I is the greatest love. This is a oneness calligraphy and it's actually two words, Da greatest I love. This one is Da Quan Shu, the greatest forgiveness. Now these calligraphies have significant power. I'll go over in a minute. This one is Da Chan, excuse me, Da Tzu Bei, which is the greatest compassion. <clears throat> this calligraphy is Da Guang Ming, the greatest light. This one is the fifth of the Da's. This one is Da Chen Bei, the greatest humility. I did a blessing and teaching on that a week or two ago. And Da He She, the greatest harmony, something that we lack a substantial amount of in this world. This one is Da Chang Sheng, the greatest flourishing. Everybody wants flourishing. Everybody wants the blessings associated with it. This one is Da Gan An, the greatest gratitude. This is one of the sacred keys to happiness. This one is Da Fu Wu. This is the greatest service. This is number nine of the ten Da's. And the tenth of the ten Da's is the greatest enlightenment. So each of these Da's build upon each other to create the ultimate condition, which is ultimate enlightenment. And I spoke about that on um, Tuesday when I spoke about the, uh, the nature of the spiritual journey. And I touched on the three kinds of enlightenment. So if you're new or if you didn't get a chance to see that, highly encourage you to go back to that Tuesday recording and watch it. It was exceedingly powerful. So the, um, when we're working with these understandings of these 10 virtues, they're all of them we know. We've heard of virtue, or excuse me, uh, uh, flourishing, we've heard of service, we've heard of, uh, of humility and harmony. We know the words, but applying them in our life is the key. If we just look, for example, at gratitude, how often do we walk through life with gratitude? Typically, myself very much included, I'm only grateful when I'm not in a stressed kind of a place, when something, quote, good is happening that I've labeled as good, and when I'm um, in a place of, of, uh, of recognizing, which is not always the case, the, the uh, whatever wonderful is happening to me or around me. If I were to check, maybe, maybe 15% of the time, I find myself in a place of gratitude. And this is, this is very sad in so many ways. How many, what percentage of the time do you find yourself in gratitude? Same thing with the other Da's. One of the beautiful things about Master Shah is he tests his teachers and he also tests his students whenever possible. How much percentage of the 10 Da's are you employing in your life? If you went through and did a check, how much of the greatest love are you employing with all of these areas of your life? This includes love to self, love in all your relationships. This includes love in, in your business and financial endeavors. And this includes love towards your physical health, well-being and whatnot. Same thing with gratitude. So you look, for example, I was chatting with a student, I see them watching today. They have significant uh, health concerns. And yet when I see their Facebook posts, their Facebook posts are always positive and in a place of gratitude. They, they choose this light approach instead of wallowing in the approaches that don't serve us. It's a very difficult thing to accomplish to be in a place of, in this example, gratitude when we, um, when we are in our mindsets, our attitudes, our stuff when we have a physical pain that just gnaws at us all the time. It could be a migraine, it could be multiple pains in your body. When we have an emotional suffering that is, is gnawing at us, and it could be a form of an anxiety or depression. How 
is it possible to have this virtue in this example gratitude employed in our life at that time one might say it's not easy it is about consciousness it is about a choice it is about agreeing on a conscious choice level that I will choose this virtue just one of them you don't have to employ all ten of them just one of them and I will continually bring this virtue into my life as much as possible in every moment as possible so let's say you wanted to bring the the virtue of harmony into your life gratitude into your life maybe you wanted to bring the virtue of service into your life because you recognize that you've been a bit self-serving the last 40 50 years maybe you want to bring the virtue of forgiveness into your life what I would do personally I would uh, write down that word uh, and maybe remember to forgive something like that and I would put it on 15 or 20 pieces of paper I would put it all over the place so I couldn't avoid seeing it and I would have those reminders I might even if I have a smartphone I put a little ding on it where it would go off once an hour to remind me to stay in a place of forgiveness if I chose gratitude remind me to stay in a place of gratitude the 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 key is to recognize that we find a great deal a great deal of our stress a great deal of our um, day-to-day -day operation we're walking through life in suffering because that's where our focus is we experience it therefore we focus on it in the next minute then we experience it again and we focus on it in the next minute and we keep repeating this process of focusing on that which is not serving us the ten daws and the purpose of the ten daws is to bring us out side of our selfishness and move towards selflessness it assists us with clearing our own Shen Qi and Jing blockages which are soul heart mind energy matter blockages um, it assists us with clearing those self clearing those by paying attention to it so for example if I chose um, uh, uh, love and, and I chose to find love in everything to look for love in everything I might start paying attention that I'm not giving myself enough love and because I put stickers up everywhere in the house give myself love if that's my mantra then if I catch myself saying unpleasant things to myself I can then remind myself you know what this is no longer serving me I choose to love myself the purpose of the ten Daws is to bless us to release all that we that we walk through that is not serving us because when you wake up in the morning is your first thought on gratitude or is your first thought is oh my god what i got to do today oh my god i got to feed the oh my god i got to do this i got to do that i got to do that la, 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 la. we want to look at our thoughts our words and our actions but it starts with our thoughts the thoughts lead to the words the words lead to the actions You've seen the three monkeys, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. See, hear, speak. Are any of those thinking? See, hear, speak. None of those are thinking, are they? Think no evil. The number one, think in the ten of virtues. When we make a dedicated effort towards that end, we will start improving all aspects of our life there is not one part that won't see an improvement as a result of focusing on these virtues so we'll start with the greatest love da I now in Master Shah's newest book soul over matter he speaks about seven of the ten da's in here and he goes into uh, actually quite a bit of information on each of the DAWs he dedicates two or three pages to each and he will be um, he is actually creating as we speak uh, the first in the series of ten books he will create a, a small book don't know how many pages my guess would be somewhere between 50 and 80 pages um, for each of these virtues so the wisdom of da I I'm just gonna read you a paragraph or two Da means greatest, I means love. Da I means the greatest love. Love melts all blockages and, and transforms all life. Every human being needs love. When you feel love 
from your parents, when you feel love from your colleagues, when you feel love from your partner, when you feel love from your children, when you feel love from your spiritual fathers and spiritual mothers. You are moved, you are touched. Da I is the number one principle to transform everything that is out of balance in your life. If everyone in a company uh, or, or a business or in, in the relationships you're involved in could use this principle, they could transform as well. And so we are familiar, for example, with mind over matter. But in employing the wisdom that Master Shah has brought to us, in employing soul over matter, we can look at the soul of the greatest love, Da I. We can look at where we lack the greatest love in the various areas of our life and ask it to serve us. If, for example, you had the calligraphy card for Da I, you can choose to purchase this if you'd like. Contact me afterward. The honor fee for this uh, is not that much, but the blessings that are placed in here are extraordinary. This is not a simple little piece of plastic. This is something that you can put on your child and it can bring blessings to them that could significantly shift whatever is happening for them that is unpleasant at that time. You can do the same thing for a loved one that is 2,000 miles away. That's the kind of power that is in here and you can own one of these. You just need to let me know. I can take care of that for you. Uh, so in the eye, in all the calligraphy cards that represent the virtues, there is countless saints, countless blessings, countless uh, layers of heaven here to serve you. And so we want to employ this wherever we can. The I, the greatest love, melts the blockages. That was the first statement. Uh, melts all blockages. Now I spoke about, I don't remember what day it was, uh, maybe it was yesterday because I was speaking about opening the heart to love again. And I remember that some of the wisdom that came through in the uh, sharing, in the, in the wisdom that I was tapping into, had to do with the original seed that we all come from is love. That is the original message from the original creator. And as we became the creator's offspring in the form of souls, we still carried that original seed or message of love. And that makes sense when you hear the message love melts all blockages because any imbalance in our life is a separation from love any imbalance it, it doesn't matter where it shows up in your life if there's an imbalance there somewhere along the line we have brought that condition to us to bring us back into alignment and so it's an imbalance of love so if we utilize love to melt that blockage stands to reason we move back into alignment the value of it. The second Da, Da Quan Shu, the greatest forgiveness. I have done numerous live streams on this. Just a few weeks ago, I mentioned I did four in a row on the various areas in our life that it can be employed. Da Quan Shu arguably is more important than love, but we know it's not, but it's, it's certainly as important. Why? because it is very much like reverse creation. When we make a choice that is out of alignment, we are uh, moving ourselves away from center, or moving ourselves away from source. We are creating a set of conditions that have the potentiality to bring us more suffering. If we make choices out of alignment with love towards ourself, towards others, uh, starting with our thoughts, then our words and our actions. And so forgiveness, is the equivalent of erasing. Forgiveness is the equivalent of reversing, assuming it is authentic. And so it's not like going to uh, mass and then walking in on Sunday and saying, you know, please forgive me, I won't do it again, and then you go out and do it again. That doesn't work. Um, you know, heaven is, heaven is very kind and very fair, but they, they're not okay with, you know, constantly making errors again and again and again when you know better. And so uh, authentic forgiveness is truly key. And then choosing not to repeat those same errors is very, very key. Da Quan Shu brings inner peace and inner joy. This is a one sentence secret that Master Shah brings to us. And I mentioned this yesterday. You can think about even just one event in your life where you had in a true and authentic forgiveness with that person that you had some significant blockage with. Uh, and 
you can you can you can literally feel the weight coming off your chest and the and the stress releasing from your shoulders there's a physical release when you have true forgiveness and that's the one sentence sacred brings inner peace and inner joy Datsu Bay is the third of the ten das and Datsu Bay is truly it's one of my favorite calligraphies it's one that I draw very well um, this one this kind of calligraphy we practice it the masters and many of the students this weekend they'll be practicing these calligraphies and Datsu Bay uh, the greatest compassion you know we have we have a, a lack of that in humanity in many ways we have a lack of compassion to self in many ways you know we we often uh, judge ourselves we guilt ourselves we we really don't treat ourselves with the greatest compassion when we make errors and mistakes think about if you actually said okay I, I resonate with this one of the ten das because my my request to all of you is to join the 21 day challenge starting tonight there's an introduction to it technically it will start next week and it's going to be focusing on flourishing that'll be the focus of it okay uh, so if anybody needs more flourishing you're going to want to join the 21 day challenge through the Honolulu Center next week um, however I would choose a virtue associated with the, doing the 21 day challenge for creating more flourishing and you may choose one of these 10 dollars that we're going through if for example you chose more compassion then it could be that you're more compassionate for those outside of you as part of this growth it could be that you're compassionate for your own negative self-talk it could be compassionate for um, some of the people that you work with employers or employees okay uh, or co-workers uh, and when you start to employ these virtues what happens is it loosens the tightness of the belt that wraps around us and keeps us in places of restriction da uh, da chen be, excuse me da se bei the greatest compassion it can absolutely be applied in a relationship uh, showing of hands i would say 50 percent of you watching have a a, a long-standing significant other relationship one in which you um, you desire very much for it to be a little bit better um, and this happens after you know three four five seven ten years we we start to lose the flavor in the relationship we start to see more of the faults and wish uh, certain things about that spouse would change okay and compassion towards the relationship towards the other and towards ourself is very important it can bring great value in in the highest teaching it's never about them anyway if you have a irritation with your spouse picking their nose or whatever it is they're doing it's your stuff maybe it's embarrassing that they pick their nose in public okay then let them be the one that people think negative about we are embarrassed because we're next to them but when people look they don't look at the at the person next to the spouse and go oh i can't believe she is with that person picking their nose no they just look at the person picking their nose and so the highest teaching is it's our responsibility when we have problems with the other person and so we can come to that conclusion as we work with the ten das the fourth of the ten das the greatest light greatest light is beyond powerful I have been amazed you know it's not a word like um, forgiveness or love where there's a, a tangible representation of it in action in relationship um, gratitude you know uh, uh, humility um, harmony these are things that we can see happening all of it, all around us in our activities in, in our day-to-day -day life the greatest light is very much intangible in that respect but from my observation it's one of the highest of the ten das because it carries with it the highest frequency 
a very, very extraordinarily high frequency. When Master Shah teaches about the nature of the blessings that we offer and their purpose to, real, to um, align our Shen, Qi and Jing, uh, to maintain that alignment, he never says the word energy. He doesn't say, you know, visualize energy moving through the body. What he says is visualize light. And he explains the reason why is because energy can be uh, both directions, good or bad. Um, and he says, but light, it just carries the highest frequencies. You have uh, golden light, a rainbow light, you have purple light, you have crystal light, and you have invisible light, all with different layers of frequencies all the way up. And I'm sure there's a lot more than that, but these are the five uh, colors of light that he refers to in his wisdom and teachings. And when he offers blessings to his students or through his books, if you've uh, not had the enjoyments of reading some of his books, you will see that he offers a rainbow light blessings or purple light blessings in some of his books. This are beyond extraordinary. People have no idea as to how powerful those light kind of blessings are. And as he, his more recent books, he's been putting higher and higher blessings of those higher frequencies into them. So one of the great things you can do for yourself um, to become more in, uh, aware of your soul and its journey is to gather some of Master Shah's books. Um, and you can ask me, you can message me uh, as to which one might be best for you to start with. Uh, everyone might, depending on where they're at in the spiritual journey, might might uh, have a better starting point with a specific book and then they can expand however they desire from there. But in all of his books, um, he, he places what's called transmissions into the books. And the transmissions, when you read the bold print, you receive a huge light ball into your uh, beingness. Uh, it literally becomes one with your soul as well. And um, the more you learn about uh, this master and his teachings and his wisdoms, you will learn that it's very difficult to get light balls of that size. Um, he has a very wide open spiritual third eye. Master Shah was in, in um, China and he doesn't go there very often. And during this trip, uh, he decided to take a little bit of his time to go to a sacred mountain where there was a sacred monastery, where there was a gentleman who was well known in China for being one of the highest in the training of Tao wisdom and teachings, traditional Taoism. So that's more like along the lines of a religious study, if you will, where you do this, do A, do B, do C, and you get D. Uh, Master Shah doesn't, doesn't do anything like that. But he wanted to learn about that because he had a foundational teaching in that. And he understood that one of the ways to, to um, return to the source, one of the ways to, um, to bring alignment to yourself is to close your eyes, meditate, and gather heaven's light using sacred methods. So he went to go see this teacher. And uh, the teacher made him wait actually several days before the teacher allowed Master Shah to enter. And they sat down. This teacher had his longest disciple with him, been there many, 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 many years. And um, the teacher was looking at Master Shah with his third eye. Master Shah was looking at the teacher with his third eye to see how big the light ball in his lower abdomen had grown because the, the sacred uh, traditional teachings of the Tao, you, you, you gather heaven's nectar for, for six, eight hours, 10 hours a day. And you do this for day after day after day. And slowly you build up this light ball inside your lower abdomen. And so Master Shah looked and he could see that the light ball in his lower abdomen was about an inch and a half after roughly 70 years of uh, dedicated practice. He was a very, very well known dedicated practitioner. And he asked this gentleman, he said, could you teach me? And um, this gentleman said, I'm sorry, I cannot teach you. You already work with heaven wisdom. He could see very clearly that the light ball inside Master Shah's body was the size of his body, not one and a half inches after a lifetime of training. When Master Shah or a, a representative like myself offers a transmission, uh, 
like the kind in the book or like the kind that you can get for an energy center, a chakra, uh, a body part, organ or system. It's like the kind that man in the mountain was doing for 60 years, except it's even bigger. And you get it just for that organ or that system or that energy center or, or that chakra. There have been many that are watching today that have received light blessings that literally in an instant receive a light ball about two inches um, that would take them hundreds and hundreds of lifetimes to accomplish on their own. So it's very hard to grasp. I get that. I'm just sharing with you the wisdom. And, you know, you keep listening. Maybe maybe you'll be able to appreciate this, this truth. Um, but what happens is the more light we get into our body, the greater the, the movement towards enlightenment. And so if you can pick up any of Master Shah's books, read the transmissions that he puts in there, because each time you do that, you're gathering more light into your body. And this in turn clears out the Shen, Qi, and Jing blockages and positions you to be um, free of some of the sufferings that you've been going through. And if you are interested in more about receiving one of these for yourself, the Healing and Transmission System, just connect with me afterwards. I'm happy to give you more information on that. It's listed on my website as well. Um, and I am doing, on a side note, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, foundational energy practices for the five major foundational energy centers using light-based practices. Okay, Da Guang Ming, the greatest light. And so part of the purpose of that is to wake people up to these foundational energy centers that they can receive, saving them hundreds of lifetimes of, of work like this old man and this old master, excuse me, in, in China that, that did this for 60 years and he has a little bitty one. <clears throat> so in any case, uh, be aware that that's available. The next Da, the greatest humility. Da Chen Bei, the greatest humility. The greatest humility is related to ego, Da Chen Bei. I did a teaching on this about two weeks ago, four days in a row. The greatest humility and ego and, and why we might choose, for example, to continue to say negative things to ourselves. Those are built on mindsets, attitudes and beliefs, ego and attachments. It helps us to remain the victim. This is actually a humility issue, an ego based issue. Um, we, uh, we bring a lot of a lack of humility into relationships, a lot. And, uh, you know, we always want to be right. Uh, there's the reverse side of that, where we allow someone to lord over us. And that is also um, not humility, that is actually ego in saying, uh, I'm going to stay here because this is the safest thing for me. And they're, they're not allowing their love of self to come out and make a better choice. Uh, greatest humility, Da Chen Bei, is the reason we have wars today. The lack of humility in the nations, in our, um, in our elected leaders, and in many cases non-elected leaders. The, the, the ego is so extraordinary, so selfish, that there is just a significant lack of selflessness to bring about an environment of oneness in this world. And so humility is a huge problem in the world. We start with ourselves. Why, if we work on ourselves, does it help everything else? Because we are all part of the same. I spoke on this two days in a row, how if we just say, I love you, please forgive me, um, we can transform almost any condition associated with us. And it sounds exceedingly simple. Uh, I'm not going to give that same example again today, but I can share with you that when we, um, when we recognize just how simple we can stop our suffering by employing these simple awarenesses more and more and more. We might only remember love and forgiveness once in a day, but the second day we might remember it twice. And then we just keep moving forward. And the more we work with it, the more we chisel away at the blockages because everything is an opportunity. Da Chen Bei. Greatest harmony. This calligraphy I had a lot of blockage with drawing, uh, doing the calligraphy on my own. Greatest harmony, which means that I had a lack of harmony. 
lack of harmony with self, lack of harmony with aligning the principles of the ten das to my life, lack of harmony with others, other students, other teachers, uh, lack of harmony with humanity. And so um, I did forgiveness practice around my lack of harmony. I asked for forgiveness for any times I'd created a lack of harmony <clears throat> in other people's lives. Any times I've created a lack of harmony in group environments or a lack of harmony in political or, or, or spiritual environments. Big karma if you start breaking up um, uh, spiritual groups that are moving in the direction that brings them to enlightenment. You go in there and you start breaking up that harmony. That's big karma because you impact people's spiritual journey negatively. It's not good to do. So I did forgiveness around that and very quickly thereafter my calligraphy improved. Because one of the unique things about drawing these calligraphies, if you choose to go down that learned path, uh, whether it's to become a practitioner in the, in, the, in the calligraphy, because somebody, they can do these well enough to reach 95%, they can receive a transmission as a practitioner, and literally by just pulling out a piece of paper and a pen, they can start doing that same calligraphy, and their friend next to them, their Shen Shi Jing blockages can come into alignment pretty quickly. Uh, in other words, their suffering could decrease dramatically just by you drawing a calligraphy with your own hand once you receive the transmission associated with it. And some people, one of the teachings that, that, that will happen on this weekend from 3 to the 10th, and any of the teachers that are interested, is that when you draw these, it literally shows you where your blockages are. Literally, it will show you in the physical, emotional, mental body how to discern where the blockages are that are keeping you from drawing the calligraphy correctly because that blockage, in my case humility, uh, or harmony, excuse me, um, it was in the middle, in the part right here. Okay, that's where I just couldn't get it right. Um, and so I had heart level blockages with harmony because they had the upper portion, which is the head, the middle portion, and the lower portion, lower part of the body. And so my blockages showed up visually, physically, but it was related to my heart blockages. The seventh of the ten das, this one is called Da Chang Sheng. This is everybody's favorite, the greatest flourishing. And when you join the 21 day practice, uh, tonight is the introduction, next week we launch it. Highly, 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 cannot recommend enough, join the 21 day launch. It's for greatest flourishing will be the focus. You will literally be uh, given a mentor and you'll be giving practices. There will be well over, I, I think there's like $2,000 worth of prizes for the 21 day challenge, including your very own calligraphy. It will be extraordinary. And so, but this one, Da Chang Chang, greatest flourishing. I have one uh, that I received recently at a retreat in my room and uh, no kidding, the days that I trace it, financial blessings come. I'm just floored by that. If I don't trace it, financial blessings don't come. I do trace it, financial blessings come. It's, it's truly remarkable. Why? Because there's power put into the calligraphies. So each one of these that I'm showing you, you can purchase. You can purchase all 10 of them for uh, 500 or one at a time, 100. If you just want greatest forgiveness or you want the greatest flourishing, they're 100. Um, this this was recently released about um, about three weeks ago, not that long ago, maybe a month ago. We No one's been able to get them unless you're at a retreat and that's it. It's the only way you could get them. And, but now the masters are allowed to distribute them, uh, but we have to honor the the honor fee that's, that's associated with them. But I can tell you they will uh, shift blockages a lot faster than trying to do things on your own. So Da Chang Chang, the greatest flourishing. Now this is the seventh of the ten Das. Flourishing is not always finances. Flourishing could be blessings in our relationship. Flourishing could be uh, blessings at the workplace. You know, um, we might not have a business, but you know, maybe we're not doing so well with the other employees and we can't seem to get an upliftment in the company. And flourishing assists us in bringing uh, balance and maintaining uh, balance in the highest levels possible around flourishing. It also affects us with flourishing of self-love. 
and flourishing with our health and well-being because we, we could have flourishing in our physical health and well-being flourishing in our emotional health and well-being flourishing in our mental health and well-being so flourishing can impact us in many different areas when we uh, why is flourishing one of the ten das it's is a, a, a virtue is not money okay so this does not mean money a virtue is that when you have flourishing in your life heaven is saying I am opening the gates so that you can have more flourishing so that you can be a better servant to humanity flourishing is about being a better servant it is about having the uh, conditions where you're not expending your energy dealing with the stress or putting out fires or dealing with whatever it is if things are smooth and additionally there are some blessings coming in financially you have the highest and best conditions with which to serve others if we're always putting out our own fires we're in a selfish place so that's why flourishing is one of the ten das because it's associated with the ninth of the das which is serving so it's beautiful the way these came to Master Shah and how they've been released to society so that we can have a template to bring about change in our life. By keeping it to one word only, the greatest love, forgiveness, compassion, light, uh, humility, harmony, then it cannot be construed inappropriately. The great teachings of the past have been prostituted by man for selfishness. This is one word that cannot be misconstrued. It cannot be tweaked or twisted in a way that brings about selfishness and inappropriate gain. And so this is one of the great uh, aspects of these ten Da wisdom teachings that Master Shah has brought to us. Number eight the greatest gratitude I spoke about this a little bit earlier I spoke that I'm probably around 15% gratitude and that typically it's only when something good happens in my life or something that um, I see a synchronicity that comes and oh thank you divine thank you Tao thank you source thank you master Shah you know thank you the angels but we truly need to have gratitude in every place in our life including the painful ones why because everything is an opportunity there is nothing that is not here to serve us <clears throat> there are three simple secrets everyone and everything has a soul the purpose of every soul is to serve everyone and everything has a soul the purpose of every soul is to serve the purpose of serving is to make everyone happier and healthier so these are foundational secrets but everything has a soul guys gratitude has a soul a relationship between two people has a soul um, the chair that's supporting you right now the screen on your television your uh, your computer or your cell phone is serving you right now it is made up of energy and matter that came from your source creator and each one of those specks of energy and matter and your phone have a soul they are from original creator every soul's purpose is to serve and we serve by making others happier and healthier is your cell phone making you happier and healthier now because of this wisdom yes thank you to my cell phone thank you to my computer thank you for the energy and matter that made up this I love all of you souls I'm very grateful to all of you souls for this unconditional service how blessed am I that you would serve me in such a valuable way now it sounds a little silly maybe but very powerful because those souls now have a consciousness and that consciousness was just activated a little bit more oh this person is talking to me I'm just a cell phone I can't believe they're so grateful for my service this is wonderful the deeper wisdom is that when we 
have love and gratitude when we show appreciation to all souls we are assisting them to be happier and healthier in other words we're assisting their evolutionary process their process of realigning their soul to the oneness that originally created them gratitude can be in the negative experiences as well because in those unpleasant experiences that we label as negative we label as painful or unpleasant in any way shape or form there is always opportunity and gratitude assists us with the transformation of that area that we're not enjoying as quickly as possible what's the alternative right moaning and groaning whining and complaining when is that ever truly brought about a faster resolve can you think of any time where whining and complaining brought about a faster resolve you probably can when you know when you're whining and complaining to the to, to mom and dad when you're six years old and they finally give you the candy but it doesn't work that way as adults whining and complaining doesn't do anything for us and in fact we often feel on an emotional and mental level even worse and so we want to be conscientious in the negative arenas when something unpleasant happens we can say for example you might want to write this one down thank you I at this moment cannot see the value of this experience but I know that everything happens to assist me to awaken more and become more light and love we say things like everything happens for a reason but that doesn't help us get past the suffering of the moment it might be a temporary panacea but what we really want to do is we want to say thank you I see this opportunity there is an opportunity here to do forgiveness to send love and to see where I might have created a spiritual debt that brought about this condition to me that I can do love and forgiveness around so that I don't have this experience more in the future and and I'm grateful for this opportunity to keep this in a positive mindset and in the light so that I don't give it more negative energy so that it doesn't keep coming back to beat me over the head this is where we apply higher wisdom the ten da's we're applying three or four of them at this moment gratitude love and forgiveness we can even employ humility if we become aware that we might have created an unpleasant experience upon another that brought that to us forgiveness allows us to move into a place of humility I deeply apologize I'm recognizing now that I might have harmed you in such a significant way that this suffering has come to me please forgive my ego my lack of awareness please forgive my complaining all this time thank you divine gratitude for this awareness that I can approach this condition with a much higher uh, possibility of resolve I will continue to do forgiveness and gratitude so that I can process through this now gratitude uh, can be activated in this way there are so many ways in which we can employ it sometimes we are triggered especially by our loved ones our, our children our spouses our co-workers they just say or do something or even look at us the wrong way and we're instantly triggered okay so we want to be able to employ gratitude for those triggers those are opportunities to recognize that we ourselves have the blockage not them doesn't matter that they rolled their eyes at us doesn't matter what they did that made us angry it's our stuff and we can move into a place of gratitude and we can say please forgive me for any time I've been disrespectful to you anytime I have been uh, authoritative and communicated with you in such a way where uh, where you know you didn't honor and appreciate what I had to say because I know that's what I'm experiencing now and so it's possible that I have done and been this way to you in the past so please forgive me so in other words we can apply this on almost any condition to help us move through and past it without dwelling on it and creating more and more problems for us moving forward okay the ninth of the ten dollars greatest service the greatest service one sentence secret I mentioned it once or twice service is making others happier and healthier 
This is Master Shah's one sentence secret. Service is making others happier and healthier. Is that hard to do, honestly, guys? Is it really hard to make others happier and healthier? Can you do this? What do you think that does for somebody's happiness? It is uh, priceless, it doesn't cost us a dime, and it can make a significant difference. It is a service just to smile. Service makes us happier and healthier. But it's not always about outside of us. There is such a thing as disservice to self. Remember, how often do we put ourselves down? <clears throat> Yesterday's teaching about opening our heart to find love again touched in great depth on if we are out of alignment with our love for Creator, then we literally start searching for love outside of ourselves, and it can never fill that empty hole. We just cannot fill the empty hole of love by searching for outside of ourselves. I, I have not found a single soul that can, that can do it. And the ones that have, the minute that person that's supposedly feeling that love for them dies, they have this massive empty hole again. Why? because they searched for love outside of themselves. Service is aspects of selflessness, serving others with no expectation in return so that they experience happier and healthier lives, whatever it is. It does not mean giving all your money away. It does not mean going out of your way in a very busy lifestyle. It means doing all those very small and little things that can make somebody happier or healthier. Putting the stapler back that you borrowed, okay? Um, you overhear a person talking about something that they might need or they wish they had had and it's two dollars and you pick it up at the thrift store and you put it on their desk. Very little things that make people happy and you don't tell them about it. And they pick it up and look around and go, oh, how special. Making others happier and healthier does not have to be a task. It needs to be something that's natural. If all humanity was built on the concept of the ten da's, greatest love, greatest forgiveness, greatest compassion, greatest light, greatest humility, no ego, greatest harmony, everybody works in harmony, the greatest flourishing. If I have food, I share it with another. Okay, there's a story of a gentleman in Japan who had not eaten and it was like five days. He was an older gentleman and the news crew was interviewing him in the household and they just served him his first fresh bowl of food and he took his bowl of food and he offered it to the news lady. This is what we need in humanity. The greatest gratitude and now the greatest service. These are virtues that if brought to you first, taught to our children next, they don't learn through words, guys. They learn through our thoughts, our words, and our actions. They watch everything that we do. doesn't matter if they're your kids or not your kids. Many, I grew up and my peers were not my parents. My peers were other people that I watched. And, and I, a lot of my personality came as a result of watching other people's thoughts, words, and actions. So rest assured that you can have a massive impact just by working on yourself. Service to self is not a bad thing. It can be selfish in a good way. I serve myself by bringing love and forgiveness to myself. I serve myself by releasing ego and attachments. I serve myself by being conscious where I'm being disharmonious with others. So that's making me happier and healthier every time I'm doing that. So we want to apply the greatest service not only outside of us, but also to us internally. There is tremendous value that can be gained from this virtue. The final of the ten da's is the greatest enlightenment. This calligraphy is very, uh, very difficult to, uh, as you look at it. Actually, I did very well with it in drawing it, the greatest enlightenment. Probably because I received blessings from Master Shah for enlightenment. Thank you, Master Shah. <clears throat> Again, for those that came in a little late, Anybody can purchase these 10 da cards. They're 100 each or 500 for all 10 of them. 
Just let me know if you're interested. They carry extraordinary power. I keep them on my Ming Min point and, and my dip in my back. Um, each person that purchases, I will give them a little Chinese satchel to put them in, a little purse. You can put it on your back or put it in your purse, whatever you want. And what they do is because they carry such extraordinary frequency and they're on your Tao point, they're literally creating a field of protection around you. They're literally creating a field around you. And anytime you're on the bus, you're in the car as the passenger, you're in a stressful condition at work, you pull out one or any of the cards and you just start tracing it. Dear all the blessings that has been transmitted to this card. I love you. Please bless me to transform whatever stress I'm going through at this time. And you can chant, the words are on the back. Da Quan Chu. Greatest forgiveness, greatest love, greatest flourishing. Okay, any one of these you are welcome to purchase or all of them collectively. So let's talk about the greatest enlightenment. I gave a, a pretty good education yesterday on the greatest enlightenment. Actually, it was not yesterday. It was on uh, Tuesday's live stream. It was a great live stream, I gotta say. I went back and listened to it and I was thanking God. I was grateful. Thank you for, for that blessing. Because before I start, before I even say hello to you guys, I ask for the highest and best wisdom that I can offer that can assist the most souls. Um, so the greatest enlightenment, there are three kinds of enlightenment. I'm not gonna give as depthful of a teaching. There is soul enlightenment, mind enlightenment, body enlightenment. Soul enlightenment is the movement of the soul through the chakra system, what Master Shah calls the seven soul houses, and it just doesn't go from one bop, to the next, bop, to the next. No, it, it goes along the track and it slowly moves up and it slowly moves down according to our virtue and our um, spiritual debt. So literally our soul uh, carries a light and that light gets bigger the more we open our heart to these ten da's. The more we have less ego, the more we are more in harmony, the more we have and offer more service outside of us and lovingly to self. The more we, uh, we bring our love and light, the more we truly work in forgiveness, the more we are compassionate, all of this grows our soul. Our soul elevates through our seven soul houses, reaches the heart center, which is the first layer of soul enlightenment. And by, by no stretch of the imagination does that mean that you, you, know, you have all the answers to the universe. No, it simply means that your soul has reached this level of awakening and awareness. You have an intention to serve, you're awakened to that, and you wish to do your best towards that end. It's exceedingly difficult for the soul to sit at the heart center. Not easy at all. Roughly 15% of humanity's souls has reached this area. And so um, one of the things you can do to assist you greatly is one of the transmission systems for clearing the blockages in the message center. Because instantly it opens up the opportunities for your soul to, to, to move higher. And so then it keeps going up, 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 up. And according to the, the readings that Master Shah has checked with in, uh, in heaven, uh, when the soul reaches above the top of the head, um, that there are exceedingly few enlightened beings on the planet today whose soul sits above the top of their head. Exceedingly few, um, less than 30. And so, uh, and it's lower than that, but I know I'm a safe number when I say that. So, Soul enlightenment has those three layers. The second layer is mind enlightenment. Master Shah teaches it's easier to move a mountain than to change your negative mindset, your negative attitudes, your negative beliefs, your ego, and your attachments. Those are the negative mindsets. But when we do, that means we have pure thought. It's simply there is no negativity that enters our thought. Doesn't matter what we witness, doesn't matter what happens to us, somebody can come up and stab us in the arm and we just look and say, I love you, please forgive me. That is mind enlightenment. Um, the highest enlightenment is body enlightenment and that's when you become a light being and you literally just flip around the universe and go wherever you want to go. You can come into, into uh, experience and, and out of experience. And so those are the three layers of enlightenment. And so that's why it's the tenth of the ten Da's. So we employ the other nine Da's to reach the highest of the ten Da's, enlightenment, which is in essence melding with the, the source, the Tao, the oneness. So this is today's wisdom and teachings on the ten Da's. I hope you have enjoyed this very short version of it. 
um, you can join and get a better a more elongated version with master Patrick this weekend Saturday he's doing a, a, a three-hour wisdom teachings through master Shaw's Tao Healing Center Honolulu and um, uh, you can learn a little bit more at that time so you're more than welcome to do that you just go to uh, dr. Shaw's website and go to events and scroll into you get to the Honolulu area and you can register there it's, I think it's only $25 very affordable for uh, three hours of significant wisdom and um, so let me finish with a blessing for everybody I'm gonna offer a flourishing blessing for everybody so you can um, feel comfortable to pick up one of these cards if you'd like no promises but I'm gonna ask <coughs> the blessings to come to you that will return the hundred dollars if you get one card I'm gonna ask this to bless you with a hundred dollars at the very least uh, so that you can get a return on your investment so to speak okay so prepare to receive wherever you're at sit up straight close your eyes dear the soul of this Da Chang Chung card the special frequencies placed into this card above and beyond the normal frequencies all the flourishing blessings in here I ask as appropriate that you offer a blessing to all of those on the line all of those watching at this time for flourishing blessings that is as appropriate for whatever they're needing most at this time including if appropriate as appropriate a minimum of $100 blessing to come to them within the next 30 days that they can validate getting a, a one of the ten dot cards for themselves I'm very grateful thank you blessings as appropriate begin da chang shung 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 chi dao chang shung dao tsu ying fu ying guo zi zhi dao tsu chang shung da chang shung Dao Tzu Ying Fu Xing Shang Ji De Dao Ye Chang Sheng Chi Da Chang Sheng Dao Tzu Ying Fu Xing Shang Ji De Dao Ye Chang Sheng Dao Ye Chang Sheng Dao Tzu Ying Fu Xing Shang Ji De Dao Ye Chang Sheng Chi Da Chang Sheng Dao Tzu Ying Fu Xing Shang Ji De Dao Ye Chang Sheng Chi Da Chang Sheng Dao Tzu Ying Fu Xin Shang Ji De Dao Ye Chang Sheng Chi Da Chang Sheng Dao Tzu Ying Fu Xin Shang Ji De Dao Ye Chang Sheng Chi Da Chang Sheng Dao Tzu Ying Fu Xin Shang Ji De Dao Ye Chang Sheng Chi Da Chang Sheng 
，道此应付，心相积德，道业强盛。七大强盛，道此因福，心相积德，道业强盛。七大强盛，道此因福，心相积德。道业长生 greatest flourishing, blesses each one of the souls watching. Greatest flourishing brings them flourishing. Greatest flourishing opens the heart and soul. Opens the love, the forgiveness. Opens compassion and light. Da Chang Sheng opens humility. Opens harmony and gratitude. Bring greatest flourishing. Da Chang Sheng. Greatest flourishing, greatest flourishing, Da Chang Sheng. Greatest flourishing, Da Chang Sheng. Blesses everyone's finances. Da Chang Sheng releases mindsets around money. Da Chang Sheng releases negative attitudes around money. Da Chang Sheng releases negative mindsets around money. Da Chang Sheng blesses everyone's flourishing. Da Chang Sheng blesses everyone's finances. Da Chang Sheng opens your heart and soul. How how how! Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Da Chang Sheng calligraphy, the countless blessings, saints, saints, animals, temples, souls, treasures. They offered their service at this time to all of those watching. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Congratulations, everyone! Very big blessings today. So, uh, for those that are interested, um, the hundred includes uh, a brand new calligraphy, per uh, excuse me, brand new little Chinese satchel purse. I picked some up in Chinatown already, and the mailing, and. Um, you can get one or two or all ten. Ten of them are five hundred, one hundred each. Uh, also, this weekend, Saturday, from twelve to three, is the three-hour uh, uh, teachings again on this subject matter with Master Patrick Sembueno. He's one of the lead teachers at Master Shaw's Tao Healing Center. And for those that are truly interested in learning more about the calligraphy, becoming a calligraphy artist. Uh, a teacher and potentially a practitioner in which you can offer blessings using the calligraphies, then please go to Master Shah's website and the scrolls will go across. Click on the one that says March 3 through 10 retreat. You can join that retreat. There are guest passes available for 50% off and it's about 200, uh, 210 Canadian. So in the US, that's about 165. Um, in, in Europe, that's pretty good. Other uh, places may be good, maybe not good, but there are guest passes available. I have to jump through some hoops to get them for you, but let me know if you're interested in that. For seven days with Master Shah for 165 US or 210 Canadian, I would do it. I cannot tell you how this will change your soul in its journey. Um, it will be extraordinary. Okay? I will see you on Monday, tomorrow. Please join me for the foundational energy practices. If Kristen has not already posted it, I ask you, Kristen, to please post the image. Uh, I should have the phone number memorized in front of me, but unfortunately I don't. I apologize. 
um, but it starts one hour before my live streams. Tomorrow I'm not doing a live stream, so look at when you came, come one hour earlier, okay? And it's on a telephone call, the phone number and everything is on there. This is for boosting your foundational energy centers, your chakras. We're focusing on one, maybe two, boost, boost, boost. So please join me on that complimentary opportunity to boost your energy centers. Love you, love you, love you. Thank you to all the beings of light. Thank you to the 10 Das, 10 calligraphies, and the countless blessings. We will see you soon. Bye-bye, everybody.